gummy bear. It's the internet, you're busy. Let's do this for September 9th, 2022. For the next hour or so, let me help you sort through the world of gaming on Game Mess Mornings Live with me, Jeff Grubb. Today, Billy Mitchell's own doctor doesn't even want to see him. But first, please join me in welcoming today's co-host, Game Mess Mornings. It's Tam from Giant Bomb and GameSpot. Tam, how are you doing? I've been playing Immortality. Hmm, I've okay. now stopped playing Immortality because I'm no longer interested in playing Immortality. But there's a character in there called Ambrosio. He's like this uh, man of God who is right. corrupted. Every time he's on screen, the only person I see is Billy Mitchell. Ooh, okay. And he looks exactly, well, it doesn't look exactly. He's got the long hair, like beard combo, and like just the facial structure that makes him look like Billy Mitchell. So every time he's on doing his weird acting things, I'm just like, in the back of my mind, there's a small voice just whispering, there's a kill screen coming. Yes, there's a kill screen. <laughs> Billy oh, Mitchell damn it. does look like a, what a, a corrupted angel would look like in my brain. Like, <laughs> like, like a fallen angel, like a Michael come down with his sword, and yeah. then the devil gets him and turns him into Billy Mitchell. I, uh, I totally see yeah. that. And he's, I think, now he's hawking hot sauce or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I love the idea of calling him Billy Mitchell fallen angel. <laughs> yes, for real. That's... Uh, oh. Yeah. It's my new concept album. I'm going to look out for it on uh, Bandcamp, everybody. Uh, all right, before we get into this mess, let's explain ourselves. Each weekday, I, Jeff Grubb, will help piece your gaming life back together. That includes breaking news, the catch-up, where we discuss the biggest topics consuming the lives of gamers everywhere, and maybe even bring some of our own original reporting. For all these topics, I'll get the input of a bona fide expert who will make me look smart. If you are watching live on Twitch, welcome. Hello, Twitch. You can always listen to the show later on podcast feeds by searching for Game Mess Mornings or find the RSS on GiantBomb.com. You can also catch the show later with chapters and timestamps on YouTube. If you're watching on there, we appreciate it. Thanks for showing up. Uh, hello, YouTube. Okay, we have a lot to get into, so let's start the morning mess with... The Direct is, is probably still happening next week. The Nintendo Direct, that uh, it's kind of been on again, off again. If you've been paying attention to my Twitter... Uh, it seems like the latest thing I've heard is that let's see, the latest thing I've heard is is Nintendo's telling people it's still on for next week, uh, and that this comes after what we heard yesterday, where right after Queen Elizabeth II uh, died, uh, there or even as she was dying, it seemed like Nintendo of America, while Nintendo Company Limited in Japan was asleep, was like we're going to plan for contingencies, and so we are going to discuss the possibility of delaying the Nintendo Direct because of this. Um, I think that the biggest thing there was they probably don't want the direct happening at the same time as a state funeral. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the, the, the word is that's going to take a little bit longer. It won't probably won't be ready. And it seems like the direct is going to happen earlier in the week anyhow. So I think as long as those two things aren't clashing and if they do, Nintendo seems like they might move it around a little bit to dodge it. But for the most part, they plan to still do the direct next week as they originally intended. Um, at, at this point, I'm kind of just like, I'm sick of talking about it. I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing about it. We just kind of want them to announce it. When will they do that? It seems like they'll probably do that early next week. And then the the direct itself could happen earlier in the week than it normally does. Uh, everyone, like when I said, like on Twitter, it could happen early next week. A lot of people are like, well, they always do it on Thursdays. Well, the Thursday is like, like in the heart of Tokyo Game Show. They yeah. need to do it earlier. So I, I, it could happen on a Tuesday, which would be weird, definitely, but it could happen on a Tuesday. So yeah. uh, you ready for this direct? Firstly, absolutely cow cowardly behavior from Nintendo. Yes, I would be agree. like, Queen's dead. They've got some stuff going on. I would be like, let's test how popular we really are <laughs> and put us up against a funeral for the mm -hmm. Queen. Because if your numbers are good against a funeral as a, of the Queen, then you're like... All right. Yeah, send so invitations to like yeah. to Kate and William. Just be like, no, you yeah, guys got yeah, you guys yeah, got yeah, nothing yeah, else yeah. going on, right? Yeah. Just, <laughs> just send um just send uh, yeah, exactly. Invite everyone who's made a, an enemy of yeah. the royal family. <laughs> right. Or even the royal family themselves, just yeah. different members. Just be like, Hey, uh Harry, Megan, you wanna <laughs> go to the funeral or you wanna come check out New Zelda games? <laughs> yeah, hey, come on. Now Boris Johnson is gonna be there, and I know that's awkward for everybody, but yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. <laughs> Boris will be there, but yeah, and he he hasn't been known to enjoy some Zelda games. 
So oh, yeah. it could be at either. So which one which one do you want to go for? It would be so good. Uh, that would be very and you're right. Nintendo by not doing that, just absolutely proving they that, that what their metal really is, which is nothing at yeah. all. They don't have a backbone. No. Uh the 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 Direct, of course, not officially announced, um, and so, but you know, they have been communicating with partners, and that's kind of what happened over the last day or two, where it was like th this discussion happened at Nintendo of America. They then had the full discussion with everyone who would be the decision maker um, in Japan for the most part, and then now today, after those discussions, it doesn't seem like the tenor of the plan has changed as they go out and reach out to partner publishers and indie developers and stuff like that. So. Uh, based on that information, I'm, I'm pretty confident yeah, it's still just going to happen mm. early next week. And also, no matter what, they they probably weren't going to have the app, like really a chance to like unless it's like a catastrophic thing or would have been like um, the queen was assassinated and we're going to be investigating this and that's going to be taking up the news for weeks. Which you know, uh, even like just the you know the quietly passing at 96, like people want to give it some space. But for the most part, I think uh, Nintendo is like, hey, we can still do this and we need to do this. Uh, because there's not a lot of opportunities uh, for us to, to to pull this off later. It's going to be a busy month for for them. It's going to be a busy uh, time of year very quickly. And it's not like they could ever like put this stuff in October. And they have a lot of partners relying on them making announcements now. Uh, the only other time they've done a similar thing in the past of delay it was with, during the um, the earthquake in Japan. And they did yeah. delay a direct. And other partners were like, we still got to announce these games. We don't have a choice. And so, you know, that's a mess. And it seems like they wanted to avoid that. Um I guess the other stuff, you know, the what's going to be there. Um, I, I've talked about Zelda stuff, Metroid Prime. Um, it, it goes like this for me. We've heard that Zelda stuff will be there. And by that, the name of the next Zelda game and the Zelda ports from of the HD games of, on, from the Wii U. Um, I, I hope that's the case. It seems like that should be the case. That's what we've heard. And then also Metroid Prime uh, HD remaster should be coming out this holiday so we should get that as well then there's stuff like fire emblem that has been rumored that seems like it makes a lot of sense but i can't confirm and uh and then stuff like ea announcing it takes two and stuff like that so mm. uh, it, it should be a pretty robust direct and i'm looking forward to it and if it happens on tuesday even if it happens like during the the uh bomb cast we'll we'll talk over it we'll talk over oh it. yeah we will talk over some some yeah, news looking forward i mean to yeah i'm super excited for it it's just i don't know partly because the potential of what it could be but partly it's because it's been a while since we've had a nintendo direct you know who knows oh, what, yeah. what what it could um give us nintendo directs it could be usually they can be sometimes just straight up game announcements and reveals sometimes they're just like meme factories mm -hmm. top to bottom um so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with either one like whatever yeah, we I'll get out it. of it I'll yeah I'll, it. I'll take it too yeah um, it's um it, Nintendo did some stuff all throughout the summer. A lot of tweets, though. A lot of YouTube drops. They did a partner direct, which was actually a pretty good partner direct, but they have not come out and taken the stage themselves for their games in quite some time. And mm. it feels like they're starting to run out of time a little bit for that, just overall with the, a potential Switch successor coming at some point. It's like, get these games out. You got four or five just sitting on the shelf or whatever. Get them out yeah. there. So Yeah. All right, let's let's talk about Billy Mitchell, the fallen angel. Uh, he says his doctor won't see him because of Donkey Kong cheating allegations. Uh, this comes from. It Kotaku. seems like a fucking lie. <laughs> it seems like the kind of thing where his doctor he probably just didn't pay his doctor or something like that. Uh, I think we can all agree that whether or not Billy Mitchell cheated at Donkey Kong that one time is basically the most important event in all of human history. Or, or if he cheated, is is the mm. uh, one of the most important events in human history and must be forensically dissected until the heat death of the universe. But in the mm -hmm. latest round of the ongoing battle between this famed video game player and a website that monitors world records, Mitchell is now claiming his doctor won't see him anymore. Uh, Mitchell, famous for his supposedly world record breaking scores on arcade cabinets like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, has been engaged in a legal battle with video game social media platform slash scorekeeping authority Twin Galaxies. In 2018, members of the Twin Galaxies community claimed to have proof that his Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. records achieved in 2010 had involved cheating. They removed the scores from the site, accusing him of using the popular arcade game emulator MAME to achieve his records rather than the original arcade hardware. And if people weren't around when that happened, when that news story broke, it was, it was like, it was massive. People got like, did huge YouTube breaks down, millions of views. And it was all just based on like, the game is rendering like vertically instead of horizontally or something like that. It was, mm. it was wild stuff. Uh, in the latest edition of Mitchell and the Arcade Machines, 
Uh, Dollar Store Nick Cave has submitted testimony for the case uh, as reported by what was once his own website. The most peculiar inclusion is Mitchell's claim that his own doctor of 30 years now refuses to see him because he believes him a cheat. Uh, and this is a quote. After Twin Galaxies def defamatory statements of April 12, 2018, says the submitted document, one of the responding party's doctors, Dr. Stanley Scoppett, refused to see responding party after responding party appeared for an annual examination. Uh, and why? After, resp after responding party questioned the assistant as to why Dr. Scoppett, who responding party had been seen for over 30 years, refused to see him, the assistant of informed responding party that Dr. Scoppett read the allegations from Twin Galaxies. I love that the idea that this doctor just on his computer. There's like, no fucking way. Going through his There's feedly. No, I just Googled Dr. Stanley Scoppett. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tell this me about dude this man. Is in, he's in Florida. Which uh -huh. I think lines up. Is that where? Yes, Billy he Mitchell is? definitely in Florida. Billy Mitchell yes. is definitely, he feels like a Florida energy. Mm -hmm. He's a board certified dermatologist. Okay. This man looks like the KFC colonel. He looks old <laughs> as fuck. This man does not give a shit about video games. There's right. no way. There's no way this person is keeping up on Billy Mitchell's day to day. The, uh, no chance whatsoever. Do you think Dr. Scoppett's nephew is like running the the calendar in the office, and he like just derailed yeah. Billy Mitchell? Just, that's what happened. Just or saw it and was it, like, "Don't, don't do this." Don't or do this. is it more likely that Billy Mitchell has uh, offended Dr. Scoppett in some other distinct and unique way, and has and he's just using this as another yeah. excuse for yeah. his uh, yeah, yeah his arguments Definitely. in court or whatever. This is one of those things where it's like he, he's done something else. Yeah. And also he needs something to establish that like defamation has impacted his life. Right. And this is the best he could come up with. If there is if this 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 does go further, I look forward to a statement from Dr. Scopic going, just pay your bills, you little asshole. <laughs> you little shit. Yeah. You, you, you freaky fallen angel, get out of here with your <laughs> I damn can't believe. One of the major moment. stories for Friday in video games is Billy Mitchell is mad at his dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible stuff. It's so important to me. I love it. Uh, I don't want to um, assume whether Dr. Scoppit is in the know about video games or not, but based on cursory glances, he yeah. gives off the energy of like, I don't give a shit about video games energy. He looks like I, he cares I, primarily about dermatology and nothing <laughs> else. I personally I actually love to judge a book by its cover. And in this case, I think Tam is right. Yes, I think Tam yes. is absolutely I right. Think, I think I'm right. Uh, all right. PS5 overtakes Nintendo Switch to become 2022's best-selling console so far in the UK. This comes from Christopher Dring at GamesIndustry.biz. It was another strong month for PS5 in the UK with stock levels up 56% in August compared to July. And this comes from GFK's data, the data tracking firm in that country. As a result, Sony's machine is currently the UK's best-selling console of the year so far. The platform moves ahead of Nintendo Switch. Nintendo's hybrid console also enjoyed a sales increase of 4% in August. Uh, Xbox Series S and X sales remained steady last month, but was in third place overall. In total, nearly 125,000 consoles were sold in the UK during August, a rise of 20% over the month before. Um, I, th th this is a... a not too surprising for one that the PS5 now available is succeeding in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, a place where PlayStation has dominated for going on forever. Uh, just yeah, I keep forgetting about those like uh, regional allegiances. Every yes. now and then they re reappear. But yeah, PlayStation is traditionally very, very, very popular in in Europe and the UK especially. Um, so I would make some, it's no surprise to me that now that they're kind of more available, people are all over it. Um, I remember in the PS3 days when that was when I was like working retail a lot. Um, people just coming in desperate for PS3s, and I'd be like, "Oh, what, what, what are you gonna play?" And they're like, a lot of them were just like, "I don't know, I just I just want a PS3." Yep. I was and like, I, "Okay, cool, yeah. You just yeah. you just need to have a PS3 in your household, please." I'm here for that sweet layer action. Yeah, I'm in, here for in, layer. And that, Warhawk. Yes. Give me that, that six cents controller with the hell it was six axis. I love that shit. Yeah. Um, just... 
it, it's uh, interesting that 125,000 consoles were sold in UK during all of August. I guess that just to put that in perspective, and I, I'm, this is just occurring to me, so it's not like I'm like coming here with like my facts and figures to diminish the UK, but that's about how many consoles sell in Japan each week, or, you know, in that range. I think last week, uh, Japan had like 100,000 just Switches sold and probably yeah. like another 50,000 from everyone else. Uh, so... Uh, and that's just, uh, those are the weekly numbers. So it's like, you know, UK, uh, pr pretty, you know, big economy and pretty big territory, mm. but a relatively small island, right? Uh, yeah, it's small. And also you kind of have to offset or like uh, compare like saturation levels in Japan versus for yeah. a console like Switch versus availability levels in the UK for a console like PS5. Absolutely. Where it's yeah, not like, apples to apples. Yeah. yeah, it's not apples to apples, but like it is it, still like it is an interesting figure to note um i i suspect like as also playstation 5s are expensive like uh, as Correct. are xbox uh series x and whatever it may be but i i suspect that people that as we get to the end of the year that is going to go up with people trying to buy those um consoles for you know presents and that kind of business now that they're available i think this is a year in which they need to be available mm -hmm. um so and uh, we'll uh, see how that goes I think we can actually speak to that uh, right now in this story. Um, PlayStation 5's 56, uh, the stock level was up 56% in August. This is before we get to the revision that is coming to most territories soon. It's already in Australia and before the price increase. Um, based on what we've seen of the teardown so far from that new PS5 model, it really, really does seem like they are using the new six nanometer chip. Uh, that's not been confirmed but it uses mm -hmm. significant, it uses about 10 to 15% less power than the previous PS5 models. And that is right in line with the efficiency you would expect from going from seven nanometer to six nanometer. What that means yeah. is they should be able to fit more chips on each wafer that they produce at over at TSMC and AMD. Um, and that should mean that it better yields and more chips. Every time you make, you do make a wafer, you'll have more chips coming out of the thing. And so uh, the, the thing there is like, it seems like, PlayStation is well away, well on their way to the path of not having such a supply constraint anymore, and they should be able to meet demand. And that, to me, that like is like, okay, this is one of the reasons they pulled the trigger on the price increase now, because we're coming out of a world where PlayStation 5s are this very rare thing still, very hard to come by. Um, and so if they were ever going to raise the price, you do it now, because in a year from now, it's going to be pretty easy to get a PlayStation 5. Yep, 100%. Uh, just over 880,000 consoles have been sold this year in the UK, according to Christopher Dring, uh, which is a drop of nearly 36% compared to the first eight months of 2021. So uh, demand is also dropping a little bit, it seems like, and that's, of course, compared to the pandemic. And so we are seeing things just kind of come back down to earth a little bit, and uh, hardware sales are a big part of that. Um, in terms of software, 1.67 million games were sold in the UK last month, a drop of 10% over August last year and down 3% from July. Uh, the best selling games of the month, uh, the best selling game of the month was Saints Row. The title from Deep Silver was the best selling digital game by a large margin, but was number two in terms of physical retail releases behind Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, which is mm. the Elden Ring of children's games. Yes, absolutely. Idea. Yep. Um, it's also worth noting, like in the lead up to the, you know, the final few months of the year spending does seem to like curtail a bit just as people prepare to spend more around the Christmas period. Mm -hmm. So like in these months, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of this like spending has kind of dipped slightly, but um, it usually like kicks back up in like November. Yeah. This is like November, this is, December, right? This is um, like I would expect November, December to be pretty equivalent to last year's November, December, where this summer is going back to normal because people are going outside. So this is when you would expect things to go down. And now they are just kind of like dipping a little bit more than they did the, the year before. But as mm. we get back to the holiday and there's a lot of games people want, I think you're I think you're probably right. Yeah. All right. Uh, labor union censored report criticizing Microsoft's military contracts. This is relevant uh, because it also deals with the Activision uh, acquisition. We'll talk about that in a second. This comes from Lee Feng at The Intercept, who writes, Labor union officials indicating they were acting on behalf of the Communication Workers of America blocked publication of a report critical of Microsoft's growing and under-the-radar support for the U.S. military and intelligence agencies. The UNI Global Union, a global federation of labor un unions that counts CWA as an affiliate, had initially commissioned a report by Tech Inquiry, an investigative nonprofit led by Jack Polson that serves as a watchdog of the tech industry. 
but you and I suddenly backtracked after a landmark neutrality deal this summer between CWA and Microsoft, in which the Seattle-based tech giant pledged not to oppose efforts by workers at Microsoft subsidiary Activision seeking to form a union. Uh, here's a quote. Because Microsoft came out and did what they did, and I think this is from a source for The Intercept, uh, in terms of respecting workers' rights to organize, we do not, we cannot be associated with this paper and its release, a UNI official told Tech Inquiry delivering the news. We cannot let you have our name in this document and jeopardize our relationship with CWA, CWA's relationship with Microsoft, and the Activision workers' right to organize. My job, like, it's just too much, it's too much, I, it will never stand, I will be fired. Um, after releasing its neutrality agreement to CWA, Microsoft gained a new ally in its bid for regulatory approval of the merger with Activision, one of the largest gaming companies in the world. In June, Christopher Shelton, the president of CWA, sent a letter to the Federal Trade Commission members requesting that the agency not use antitrust laws to prevent Microsoft's acquisition. We now support approval of the transaction before, before you because Microsoft has entered an agreement with CWA to ensure the workers of Activision Blizzard have a clear path to collective bargaining, wrote Shelton. Uh, Tam, this is like, it feels like um, succession. It feels like uh, uh, the, the drama of these big companies uh, positioning themselves on a chessboard in a cold and calculating way that feels completely detached from mo most human beings' understanding of like what is mm. uh, right and wrong. And yet the final result here is that the people at Activision have a clear path to to unionizing because this union is align its, align it, uh, aligning its uh, purpose with Microsoft temporarily. So I, I kind of like this is a, uh, it feels like a um, subterfuge and it feels like, uh, you know, spying and all this stuff. Mm. But the end result here still seems pretty good for Activision workers, right? Yeah, that's, it's very confusing. And it's like, I've read this multiple times and I'm still trying to unpack what the, what is going on properly. And like, the, it is very, very confusing. And these kind of like struggles between unions and, and, and like the, the corporations are tricky and messy at the best of times. Doing it right. at a time when, you know, an acquisition is also happening is nightmarish uh, in terms of like getting stuff done. But yeah, right. as you said, the long and short of it is like um they're in a better position now to unionize and and you know look and when we say unionize what we're effectively saying is look after the interests of the workers right um, use your collective bargaining power right yeah exactly um and that for activision employees that's massive because activision has a noted and uh, highly documented uh, history of not being great to their to their kind of employees and workers um, so the fact that they're able to step into the kind of this this back and forth between these two companies as they're being entering into a sexy business arrangement, um, and and also like uh, enshrine and develop that uh, bargaining power is is good. It's great. Um, yeah, if you, what it feels like is um, this is the sausage getting made, and it's kind of uh, distasteful and un unsettling to look yeah. at. Like, oh, this is how it works. But when we talk about worker, like workers of the world unite, use your power together to have a seat at the table. A seat at the table looks like this. It is saying, okay, we mm -hmm. want stuff for our workers, so we're gonna go sit at the table and we're gonna listen to what this the company needs. And can we, using our power, help you achieve that while getting what we need? The CWA, yes. do they, and the workers of Activision, do they really care whether this deal goes through or not? Uh, does that affect them? Do they care what the regulators uh, should be doing with their jobs? No, they want to get theirs just like they should want to get. That's the whole point of this union. And so yeah. by coming together and saying, hey, Microsoft, we know you don't actually care about unions. We know you don't actually care about the workers, not really. You are a, a cold calculating business, just like every other business in, in this capitalistic s system. So we are gonna say, no, we have power now and we can lend you some of that power in your effort to consolidate more uh, of the video game industry under, under your wing. And so if you mm. want that, then, then give us this neutrality agreement, guarantee us a pathway to unionization. And if you do that, then we will go to the FTC and say, sure, we don't mind this deal. This is not going to stand in the way of what we really need. In fact, if yeah. you don't do this, it's going to be harder for us to unionize. So we actually are, we, we prefer this. That's what yeah, Microsoft this is... wants. It's what the union wants. It's yeah. what the workers want. Yeah. 
this is how it has to go down. Like, uh, we have to remember that, like, at every turn, video game companies are doing their best to not allow or, like, to prevent unions from starting to exist. And you've got to play dirty in a lot of ways. In an, estab- in an industry where unions are established, you perhaps wouldn't have to do it as, as ruthlessly yeah. as this. Or, like, you know because you have other examples of it but unions in the video game space just don't exist in a meaningful capacity so companies have to kind of fight tooth and nail com- not companies like groups ha- and, and unions uh fledgling unions especially have to fight tooth and nail and sometimes you gotta get in bed with you know the people that are the perceived enemy or the opposition or whatever it may be um to get what you need the monkey's paw will curl at some point um but hopefully at a time when this union will have enough power within um, their own organizations to kind of protect the people that um, that are signed up and, and are working on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. I think the, as, as tricky as it is, and, and there will be sacrifices need to, ma- need to be made, the, the long-term kind of result will be a net good, I think, um, yeah. for, for the, for the um, uh, workers, and not just a net good for the workers of Activision, uh, and micro and Microsoft then whatever it may be or whatever they call themselves, but other uh, companies who are also in the midst of trying to create unions where they work. The best thing about help establishing a union is you show people that it can be done, mm-hmm. and then they start doing it. That's how unions propagate in a lot of ways by looking at each other and then sharing of information. You look at the stuff that's happening at Amazon and Chris Smalls and that kind of stuff that has kind of lit a fire in various other uh, kind of companies like the, the Starbucks uh, kind of unions are, were emboldened in a lot of ways by seeing the Amazon stuff and back and forth. And, you know, there are other unions, small ones that exist pre-Amazon um, and the Chris Moore stuff. But the Chris Moore stuff is really what pushed it into like the mainstream, right? Like he was taking mm-hmm. on Bezos. And, and then you see that happening and then you think, oh, maybe I could, create a union where we are and the same thing happens in in the industry you know um whether it's development side or even on our side like the journalism stuff like po- the polygon union side for example like mm-hmm. the vox union that is a, a big deal because a lot of other publications look at that and are like maybe we need a union mm-hmm. so you know yeah you it's go. um and uh why sloth and chat says like I, I don't think regulators should take into consideration uh, you know what, what unions are saying or whatever and and it's like you know, in a, like a perfect world, right? They should be looking at what is going to keep a competitive market. Uh, what the reality is is this is the politics of it, and um, and you know when, when Elizabeth Warren hears that the unions are in favor of this deal, I, I think that helps alleviate some of the heat she might have otherwise put on there. At least that's what the theory. That is the, yeah, the, I the mean, assumption that these companies are working under. Yeah, exactly. And like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders have been quite vocal about being a little bit um, uh, reticent about this stuff happening. And if you can, and, and you know, for both of those uh, senators, um, politicians, unions are a big, big thing that they talk about. So if you can go to them and be like, hey, we represent the union, we're good, we've had the chats, it's all, it's all, it's all gravy, baby. Like you get them on side, it makes things a lot easier, especially for Microsoft. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's move on to Amy Hennig's Marvel game reportedly stars Captain America and Black Panther. Uh, This comes from a Marvel-focused Twitter account called MCU Status. The game will see the duo facing off against the forces of a Hydra in World War II. Eurogamer has since reported that it understands these details to be correct. The game, which is scheduled to be revealed during a Disney and Marvel showcase today, is the first title from Skydance Media, a studio formed in 2019 by Hollywood production company Skydance. Um, Amy Hedig, of course, known for uh, 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 Uncharted and things like that. This seems like the kind of thing that she'd be pretty good at. I, I'm, I like this idea. How about you? Uh, you know what idea I like for Amy Hennig, Jeff Grubb? Well, what's that? It's called Soul Reaver. Oh, my God. Here you All go, right? everybody. Amy Hennig Did you see that, though? Soul Did you see the news Reaver. yesterday? You see the news? They got the Soul Reaver the franchise, the IP back over under Embracer where it belongs. Let's it's fucking back. go! It's back home, baby! <laughs> uh yeah, Eidos and Crystal Dynamics got all their IP back for the most part, so uh, that included Soul Reaver and uh, uh, Patrick Finally. Kruppen was saying, he was, he was on your side of things, uh, Let's saying go. that in bre- we need to bring we get it back. In, yeah, before we get into um, the actual topic at hand, Embracer, 
if you need some crystal dynamics if you need someone to kind of champion you come onto the side and you know help you out make this game let me know i'm willing and ready to be embraced I'm, I don't know ready, if I actually am. Ready, <laughs> to, I'm ready, to, ready to be embraced if it means he gets a new soul reaver. That's yeah, exactly. it. He's put, uh, he's but put yeah. it all on the table, everybody. Yeah, um, this this thing is pretty much exactly what um, uh, Amy Hennig would be would be amazing at. I think it might be based on um, a comic book run from like I think it's like twenty. 2009 maybe 2010 it was called like flag of our fathers or something like that mm. which was captain america a black panther team up in in a world war ii era um it was pretty well regarded as well back then if i remember correctly um uh, i can't remember the name of the writer i think it was, was it brew baker at the time 2009 no, was like maybe I like don't... before brew baker uh, uh. I can't... yeah it was pre i think it was Brubaker was obviously around, but it was like a, ooh, I can't remember. It's like Reg, Reginald something or another, I think, something like that. Um, but yeah, um, that is, I believe, in that series is the first time they those two characters actually um, meet. So um, Reginald Hoodlin. Yep, yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah. Um, that yes, that's yeah. right. That's who did it. Yep. Yeah, those two, those two meet for the first time. I think it was uh, under the Marvel Knights imprint as well, um, which I I really like the sound of this. I really yeah. like the the. This sounds really cool. Um, I do wonder if it's a co op game or if it's like a you know what's the kind of split you play. Some of it as Black Panther, mm -hmm. some of it as Captain America. I really like the idea of that. Um, interestingly, one of two black panther games now being made because ea has that open world black panther game they're also working that on, is right? correct yep and uh, i think um, since uh since i reported that uh steven totillo today confirmed that he's heard some similar stuff so yeah 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 um i'm excited for it um i've been hearing whispers of this thing as well so um not surprised to see uh that is finally out there and i'm hoping that they show something of it today at the disney yeah thing. um it, if it if they don't show it then please make sure you at blessing jr on mm -hmm. twitter and be he, like he's the reason the, yeah he is the reason why is it blessing jr i think it is yeah i think it is he he's, he just wants yeah, to keep it for himself if that's the reason yeah. we don't see it uh it's because blessing. blessing was like this is for me just me yeah, just this me. is my payment <laughs> i'm blessing jr that's his voice <laughs> by the way um I, I you know hearing that this is based on a comic i think is um, makes me more interested because it's like kind of feels very mcu like where it's like hey we're gonna take the story from the comics that everyone likes and we're gonna adapt it in a cool and new and interesting way and i think a lot of um marvel games are like we're gonna take the character and adapt it and we're gonna tell our own story and that worked out great for spider-man no complaints uh, but I, I just think that yeah there, there's some cool stuff to mine and that would be very cool uh for them yeah to, Take and that it, concept and, and just run, uh, run with it. My hope is they're looking at. We, we always hear, but I guess like the Arkham games and the Spider Man games, where it's like we're taking the key plot beats and moments from this series that made right. it like um, memorable and we're kind of reworking them into a new original story. Right. I don't think you bring Amy Hennig on just to make her rewrite some comic book panels, you know? No. She, she's an amazing writer and and knows narrative and characters inside out and so i suspect that it will be an original story with some of those beats from the comic uh, or at least just like the underlying concept um taken from that series to input into this game but yeah exciting times i honestly like i know people are saturated and pretty much kind of annoyed by the marvel stuff even i'm a bit like no, i'm quite I'm cool good. yeah I'm, I'm a little bit cool on the on the recent stuff especially um but i think there's still a lot of like interesting potential for marvel in games especially yeah. um you know avengers assemble notwithstanding um obviously the the uh the multiplayer not the best even though for my sins i played a lot of it and sometimes <laughs> do dip into it again with one greg miller um but uh the single playing that was pretty good like um yeah i enjoyed that as campaign um so like there's opportunities for for bigger marvel games to be made yeah um, and with, with respect to janet oh uh, i um i get the urge to replay guardians of the galaxy all the time now uh I, I, you know i played through that game really loved it and i'm like man i could play that again on my steam deck i should do that i should do that 
It's a good game. Um, EA Ridgeline, or I'm sorry, EA says Ridgeline Games revealed as the newest studio dedicated to the Battlefield franchise. This comes from their EA blog. Uh, Electronic Arts has revealed the newest addition to its family of over 20 development teams, Seattle, Seattle-based Ridgeline Games, led by Halo co-creator Marcus Leto and composed of industry veterans from around the world, Ridgeline Games will be focused on developing a narrative campaign set in the Battlefield universe. Uh, what was that um, Battlefield uh, cop game? Battlefield Hardline? Hardline. Hardline. I think it's, so we're finally getting Hardline 2 here, Tam? Is that and what we're getting? some Copaganda games. Let's go. <laughs> Remember that that E3 where they had like the whole all like, yeah it was a lot of propaganda at E3 for it that was game so much it that was game weird. was bizarre I yes. it's I I remember playing it for like maybe an hour and being like this is bizarre and bad well, how did this happen Yep uh, it, they said that it is a great honor to have the opportunity to collaborate with Dice and Ripple Effect and lead the charge on expanding the narrative storytelling and character development opportunities in the Battlefield series. That is from Leto, the game director and head of Ridgeline Games. Uh, Ridgeline Games is focused on building a diverse studio where everyone's voice is valued and where creating uh, a strong work-life balance is a priority. Located in beautiful Kirkland, Washington, the breathtaking views from the mountains are a strong influence on the studio's mission, where, uh, where creating the Ridgeline, uh, where, where cresting the Ridgeline is a reminder of the work we do to reach the top and how we strive for that beauty and all we do we're by some mountains and that makes us that helps us make games good <laughs> i like that shit that's funny um so this one's from vince zampella who uh people might remember is now sort of in charge of all things battlefield as well as you know respawn over at ea uh, he's definitely becoming like the big boy over there he said we're continuing to invest in the future of the franchise by bringing in new talent and perspectives uh, he says, uh, with Marcus and his team at Ridgeline Games joining the world-class global team we, ha- we have already in place, Battlefield is in the strongest position to succeed. So doubling down on Battlefield, uh, obviously this is something where um, Battlefield 2042 is in a, like some you know, mildly rough shape. Doesn't seem like they're going to have the, the effort. They're not going to make the effort to necessarily rescue it in a similar way to something like a um, a, a, a siege or Rainbow Six Siege over at Ubisoft. So mm-hmm. instead, they're going to kind of just like skate through the rest of the 2042 content and then start fresh with new Battlefield stuff. But that apparently is not just going to be a Battlefield next from uh, Dice, also a narrative storytelling game with characters from this studio. Do you think this is something that Battlefield needs? Because my initial reaction is. Do all of this that you're saying, and then just remove the Battlefield part from it. Uh, I don't know if Battlefield needs to be invested in this way, but um, I could be wrong. I uh, I I would agree to a degree. Um, I think I think like personally, I Battlefield feels like one of those franchises that people believe has more power than they. And then it actually does, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Like I at a I certain agree. company, at a certain point, you have to kind of take a step back and be like, "Is this what we think it is in our brain?" Because like I don't think it is. If they did like the the research, like it's there's a short of like for me, for someone who played Battlefield for a really long time, like short of Battlefield Bad Company Three being announced, like I'm just like I don't really care. Um, I like Battlefield games. I don't enjoy playing Battlefield games very much anymore. Um, and, and like they've become synonymous with like shaky launches and, and, and over, over promises and under delivers kind of situations Definitely. there. Um, I will say the latest game has come a long way. Um, they, you yes. know, it launched in a, in a rough state and, you know, they stuck with it for a while in terms of content. I wouldn't say that it's like amazing now, but like, it's a much more playable and you, you can have fun in that game a lot easier now, um, which is great. Um, I think they need to, I would love them to, to, to try something new entirely. Yeah. And, and like it bring in, you know, put battlefield aside for a bit and a new ip whatever it may be but we know the world we live in like there's right even even if no one gives a shit like there's so much tied up in the battlefield name in terms of marketing and like right. a history nostalgia that kind of stuff that i think it's it's going to be a tricky one for them to put down i think the best we get is some sort of like sub brand again hardline s yeah um, as you mentioned, which feels... I mean, this, this should be Bad Company 3, but I feel like if it was, they would have said it right now. 
They could have said yeah. these are the people that are gonna like bring us back those beloved characters and those the, those goofy antics that you got in Bad Company One and Two. Yeah. Uh, the the, yeah. the interesting thing about this is that um, the phrasing of it is like they're just like they're gonna be making the Battlefield campaign, right? Um, right. I. Based on what I read this as, I don't think this is like a spin-off thing. I think they are making the single-player campaign. You think for the next... this is just going to be the, the the campaign that is part of the next battlefield? This I, is I, the campaign for the next mainline battlefield. I, I you're probably now that I'm reading this again, developing a narrative campaign set in the battlefield universe. So I yes, it, it, it is a little awkward because it's like it doesn't say whether they're developing a narrative campaign for the next battlefield. It's just a yeah. set in the battlefield universe, but. I think you're probably right. I, I think the one thing is, I would at this point in time in 2022 and uh, the year of of our Lord uh, and Savior Billy Mitchell, um, it, fallen angel Billy Mitchell, please fallen angel Billy me. Mitchell. Yes, uh, for Battlefield 2042 should have been free to play. Uh, yes. it should that that should have been a free to play game. It wasn't. It was seventy dollars, and that was a big one of the big hurdles for that thing. The next Battlefield multiplayer game probably will be free to play. And then maybe this launches at the same time and you buy this campaign yeah. and then you get the stuff for the for the multiplayer game, all the bonus stuff with it if you spend the sixty, seventy dollars, whatever they're gonna charge you. That's probably how this plays out, right? Yeah, I, I would guess so. Um that is what I'd imagine. I, I it's kind of funny because like um if you're <laughs> if you're if you're if you're just looking like your game's gonna launch busted, just make it free, man. Cause yeah. if you if your thing is busted and you're like, This is free, people are like, Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry yep. about it. We'll, yeah. we'll stick with it for a while. We'll sit. We'll, we'll sit by and play. And then, as long as you have new stuff, because otherwise, yeah. then you turn into Halo People, Infinite. And then, you know. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yep. um, I think. I think you are right, though. Um, I would be surprised. Would like in this day and age, a new multiplayer shooter has to be um, free just by virtue of the context within it, within which it launches. You know, mm. um, even Overwatch is 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 pretty much that now. Um, so, uh, like, Apex is out there, there's PUBG, there's, you know, their Call of Duty has a free component, so I feel like it has to be, and this is where the, the kind of, like, paid investment comes in, where they have a single-player campaign. The interesting thing about Battlefield is, because they've been so resistant to following trends that are established, like, going free-to-play when, it ha when it, everyone was doing it, and and having a battle royale campaign when everyone is doing it now they have to kind of make these pivots in ways that feel awkward if you know what i mean like mm -hmm. um they if they launch now as a free multiplayer only thing they're going to get criticized for not having the content to support it as battlefield fans would, ex would expect so now they kind of have to they're beholden to creating a single player campaign if you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. now it's like, if they had done that a little while ago, they could have gone over that and now been like, ah, we can do whatever we want. Like, here, here we go. Um, but it's just it's just a real... Oh, Battlefield is in such an awkward place. I would yes. love for it to be uh, flying high again because obviously I want all games and franchises and people who work them behind, behind them, like, to succeed. But they're in a, such a weird spot. I, I think I would, like you said, like, I would love them to do something completely new whether that's mm -hmm. a brand new IP or a sub brand. Um, but like, I think they're going to commit to this and they're going to start fresh and hope that this new battlefield is, is a little more on point. Um, I mean, like there's Marcus Leo's studio uh, uh, and, and the team that are there are solid. Like disintegration was the last game he worked on um, and not an amazing game, but full of some really interesting ideas at the very least we we can look forward to some non-standard battlefield gameplay yeah. from this single player which honestly like battlefield games do it much like they, they're just like they just kind of like f wash uh, exactly they're all very f similar they need to be prototyping with new ideas absolutely yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, check this one out. Uh, Xbox is experimenting with some UI layout changes with Insiders. Uh, starting this week, a random subset of Xbox Insiders in the Alpha Skip Ahead ring will see some layout design and ease of access changes as we experiment with different approaches. In addition, we are also exploring uh, options for new game channels and collections. When you scroll down, that include, con uh, include content that's curated for you based on things you the on things like the games you've played or how to make the most out of your game pass subscriptions um 
I think honestly, just this jump back in thing looks better than what they have right now. Uh, yeah. And it looks pretty good. I, I think this, uh, but you know, I've learned how to use an Xbox and I'm like used to it. So as long as they don't d disrupt the flow that I have, I'll be fine. Make your changes yeah. to it. I, it's kind of exciting that they're going to be updating it at all after not doing it for the launch. So it's like, I kind of thought, oh, you guys are just going to settle into this forever. But I suppose they could just use some sprucing up and it seems like that's what they're going to do. Um, it, anything that you want from an Xbox UI upgrade? No, I, I, I've I made my peace with the Xbox UI now. I think I've reached a point where I know where I'm never going to feel 100% comfortable in what I'm doing. Um, but I, as long as they don't like mess with it too much now, um, I've kind of like, as you, as you said, I've kind of learned how to get where I need to. Um, and, and I'm cool with that. I think the thing that I want now is a bit more clarity and like, um, curation in a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's mainly store stuff, you know? Um, sometimes I go into like the store or like game pass and it's just like a mess of shit. I'm like, I don't. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I'm now, I, yeah, it is very overwhelming. I reach a point now where I'm like treating it as if I'm going like grocery stop sh shopping where I need to know exactly what I need. Otherwise, I'll just spend my entire time walking up and down aisles feeling like I'm trapped. Um, so now I just like look for what I need and get out and immediately search for what I need and get out. Um, which I think is probably not as not conducive to what they want out of that experience. They want people to like linger in there and experiment and check things out and you know that kind of stuff. So I think they need to curate a bit better and also even surface things a bit better um, because the amount of times it's like the thing that's the for you picked for you section is like seven um, rows deep and, and you need to go two screens down to get to it is like very strange to me. Uh, Stalker 2 refunds reportedly be an issue due to release date postponement. Microsoft has reportedly started refunding players who pre-ordered Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl because the game's release window is now uncertain. According to uh, X XGP, Xbox ha uh, has been reimbursing pre-order customers and explaining that the decision to do so is because the game's release date has been postponed to an unconfirmed date in the future. Uh, the game also appears to have been removed, or has appeared to have removed the ability to place new Stalker 2 pre-orders via the Microsoft Store. So uh, I, this is a, a, a weird one. We knew this game was supposed to come out uh, by the end of this year, right? It got, or by earlier this year, it got delayed. Um, it was, they said like later this year, I don't think anyone necessarily ever really believed that. We have not heard much from Stalker 2 since then. I wonder if we don't hear about it again uh, for quite some time. Uh, I mean... What, do you think this is a game that's still going to come out in the next like six months? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm getting huge, like someone in the chat mentioned it, but I'm getting huge Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 energy from it. Yeah, it's like, I hey, agree. We're, we're making this game. See you later. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think. I honestly, like, I'm in no rush for it. I've, I yeah. did not pre order uh, right. because, like, these days, like, I just don't pre-order games anymore. I'm just like, uh, I'll wait until it's available. Like, this this game did have devs that were in Ukraine, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, so th that was that a has huge impact part of this. Right, yeah. exactly, yes. Um, and, and, like, it, this, this, this stuff is entirely, I'm not saying this is the developer's fault. There could be any number of exactly, reasons yes. for why why that happens you know um well, just we haven't heard like, about it and we don't expect yeah. to for a long time yeah. still and i i really like the stalker franchise so like if they if, the, if this just means that like they get to to spend a little more time on it and also not put themselves in any danger and also like not work under conditions that are stressful and detrimental to them considering that game development on its own is hard game development when you're in a region that is like under in in a, in a state of like uh upheaval is infinitely harder um for me like if it's a case of you know crunching and doing all this nonsense to get the game out or these developers actually looking after themselves first i'll, I'll wait for one two three years before exactly. Stalker, as far as i'm concerned uh don't nod signs publishing agreement with tiny bull studios for unannounced action rpg uh, Don't Nod will publish the upcoming Tiny Bull Studios game developed in the form of a co-production, which Don't Nod will hold the majority rights of the intellectual property. Based in Turin, Italy, Tiny Bull Studios, staffed by an experienced team of some 15 people, is currently developing a ri an original creation in keeping with Don't Nod's creative vision and values. The new game has powerful sales potential in the buoyant action RPG segment. Uh, 
Yeah, this is um, mostly I wanted to bring this up because it's in line with what we've been hearing recently about uh, many companies trying to expand into publishing, but in doing so, like taking some ownership of the IPs that they publish so that they are well positioned for when they get acquired. So they like, and we have the, all these IPs, so we're worth even more money. Um, mm. It's just it's going to be a, a more common thing. I think we see where developers, they don't not is the uh, original. Um, uh, what's, what was the yeah, the game that? Uh, Remember me? Yeah, rem not, is remember me. Is the, the magic girl, the, the, the sort of um, life is health, strange. Life is strange. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, and so, like, like you know, they've they have a series of games they put out where it's like you know they've grown an audience, and now they're like, okay, well, we can keep doing that. And while we do that, we should also be growing our business in another direction, publishing and getting some IP rights as we do that. So yeah, I expect that to be. Uh, yeah, the magic girl. Yes, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Sailor Chat Moon likes that one. They made Sailor Moon. Holy yeah, shit! So, listen, that one thing that has a magic girl in it. You all know what I mean. Vampire uh, with a Y. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile officially announced ahead of full reveal next week. In a message accompanying the Warzone Mobile teaser video, the publisher publisher said it plans to unveil the title at a Call of Duty event next week. Man, next week is going to be packed. It's there's going to be nonstop stuff next week. It's going to be busy, Ooh, yeah, but buddy. You don't know the half of it. Uh, apparently not. Uh, taking place on September fifteenth, Call of Duty Next will also include new details on Modern Warfare Two and Warzone Two. Our our mission with Project Aurora, the code name for our mobile title, is to b bring friends, families and people around the world together in a global community of diverse players with a fast-paced, precise, and high-quality Battle Royale action experience that delivers a fresh new way to play, Activision said. Um, yeah, uh, Warzone on mobile is makes all the sense in the world. Of course, they were going to get to this point eventually. Yeah. You you would go all the way through this story without even once mentioning where this was announced. Uh, was this announced on, I, 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 maybe I did not include this. Was this announced on, uh, s the Swipe Mobile Showcase? Yes, buddy. It was announced on the GameSpot Swipe Mobile Showcase. Hey, you need to understand that while you guys were doing that, we were making jokes about a dead person and playing Sonic 06. <laughs> doing what was the real uh, important work. The Lord's work. Yes, the Lord's exactly. work. <laughs> really just uh holding up the like while you were doing actual work, we were doing that. So give me a break here, buddy. Um listen, listen, uh, giant bomb dude is all I'm asking you is to go to the uh the youtube.com forward slash game spot and just just watch the the swipe mobile showcase. You know what? Just uh, here it is. I'm gonna don't go watch, watch it right it. after this. Don't, Mostly don't even I feel watch bad. It. Just put it on in a browser. Put it on your and, TV. And use the the, the 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 streaming thing your TV. And make your children watch yeah. it. Just just let it run through. It's an hour. Don't worry about call it. The, call It'll the call the aunt and uncle that are in the back room. They're sick. Get them out of bed. Make yeah. them watch Actually, it. Actually, you know what? If you you should watch it because uh, I wrote me and Lucy wrote all of it. Yes. And we wrote it to be funny. We tried to make it a little bit fun. So there's some sketches in there. You know, there's a narrative in there, but not in that annoying way where it's like, okay, you're trying to you're trying. To, trying to tell a story here and shit like oh, we don't want to hear that it's it's a short sweet thing don't worry about it it's fun there's a, a link yeah. to it in the chat right now everybody yeah. so uh yeah definitely definitely check that out i um i'm, I'm proud of you damn that's what i want to Thank say you. i'm proud of appreciate you it. appreciate it uh how's it look the call of duty Warzone? i don't know they just told us what the name was and so that was it <laughs> Square Enix trademarks Radek engine in Japan. Uh, Square Enix filed a tra trademark for the Radek engine on September 1st in Japan, which was made public today. Square Enix currently only has one publicly known internal engine, the Luminos engine, developed by Luminos Productions, which powers the upcoming open world RPG for Spoken. It also uses commercial engines such as Unreal Engine 4 and Unity. Um, Radek engine, like, I, I don't, I guess I'm like trying to like place this. Could this be the engine that they've been building Final Fantasy fourteen in? And now they're like, yeah. they're going to build it out from there? I'm like, I'm trying to place it in my head if that seems to make sense. So I wonder if like they're like, okay, you know, we've had a lot of success with this. We are going to be investing in this for a long time. Why don't we build yeah. it out and maybe get it to a point where it can make sense to, I don't know, I guess license it out. Why do you need a, na a trademark something if you're not going to like, enter it into a commercial zone i suppose but uh. i mean like the if there is the final fantasy 14 engine there's a lot of tall looking ladies uh is it the viera there's viera in there there's yes. uh, a lot of tall looking vieras in there mm -hmm. and uh, they could just license it out and be like hey do you need a tall hot lady mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your game we got the right. engine for that we got the tall lady engine we tried to name yeah. it that that was already taken but we got uh, yeah. capcom had that's that gone, for yeah. uh, that's the other name for the re engine but yeah, Radic totally engine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And we do it better. We do it better. Absolutely.
Yeah. All right, uh, let's just do this catch up real quick. The idea at Xbox Fall Showcase is scheduled for Wednesday at 10 a.m. next week, so another event for next week. Uh, and the Xperia Gaming event from Sony is happening next week. Uh, Sony has confirmed that it will be hosting an event on the 12th of September. Actually, is that the, over the weekend? Oh, no, that's, that's, yeah, that's like a Monday. That's next um, week. Yeah, the content of the event is unknown, but it's being held in Japan and happening under the, under the Xperia brand, so it's mobile-related. I, I cannot believe the Xperia brand still exists. Me too. I, listen, I'm like, I'm here for I want to see what they're going to do, but it's like very, like, no one ever was like, come check out my Xperia. <laughs> like, no, I've never I haven't had a... heard of Xperia in literally years. You know, here's, I got a, t there's the teaser for the event. Uh, it's called Born to Game. Sony Xperia, Sony's Xperia new gaming gear is coming. So take take from that what you will. Let's take a look at this. Let me get it over here for you, everybody. Uh, Sony, where were you when we were making a mobile game showcase? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. Wow. Aaron is born to game. Made for pro gamers and streamers. What does it mean? I don't know. There was a boy holding a phone, if you're listening to the audio version. There's not uh, a boy. <laughs> There's a sweet boy, boy holding like a phone. Are you are you looking at that boy? I can look at the boy if you need me to. Get the boy oh. up on the screen All right, let's and see put him. him on the screen as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean he's right. He's right okay. there. Do we, do we pause, see him? Okay. Pause, pause. Pause it. Okay. Is that a real boy or is that a CGI boy? Oh man, I think I'm team CGI. That's a. That's I think a, that's a CGI. He's boy. He's too smooth. He's very smooth. It's like a dolphin. He looks like a CGI boy. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean, Jeff? I don't, I don't know. What does that mean? Maybe. Maybe CGI boys are coming from Xperia Gamer Gear. Who knows? What? I bet you that if they announce that, they will be more successful if they announce that Xperia has built-in VTuber functionality than yes, if they said yes. it was an entire new gaming platform. I yes. guarantee it. Our new VTuber tech enables you to be a very yeah, smooth, this, realistic boy. Yeah, we've got a new VTuber tech in this, and we've also partnered with BTS to make one of the BTSs um the voice of our uh in phone assistant mm -hmm. there you go i i love it and i hope that i think we are right i don't i don't i hope we're right i know we're right we finally got it um someone is making a new vmu for the dreamcast it's called the vm2 finally. Finally. It, yes and it's on indiegogo right now the vm2 project aims in uh to it aims to be a total reproduction and upgrade of the original vmu it has stuff like a new monochrome backlit lcd higher screen resolution, micro SD storage, internal storage of 128 kilobytes or 200 blocks, uh, embedded high capacity battery, micro USB connection, original audio support, DreamEye support, uh, and then the LCD game images streaming to PC. Um, it, you can plug this right into your Dreamcast controller. It, it basically, yes, as Marino chat says, time to garden some chow. Yeah, chow, right? That's how they say it. Chow, yeah. I always wanted is to say chow. Is it chow or is it KO? Okay, is, it is, it ka is it KO? Is yeah, nice? I, I think it's Chow. It's Chow Chow. It's Chow? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Ch chat's going to yell at us one way or the other here in a second. It's Chow. Ch chow. Oh. It's Ka Chow. It's uh, put like. A what's... Little, put a little Lightning McQueen in the VMU. Yeah, a little and Lightning it McQueen a on top. <laughs> Sprinkle a little bit of that, that Owen Wilson on there. That always is a good thing. All right. Let's see here. Um, uh, you there know, was a poll in the, in the chat. Uh, and the poll is, are Jeff and Tam real boys? And it looks like, uh, yes, they aren't smooth at all, has won. Let's go. <laughs> I'll, I will never be smooth. I'll never be smooth, and I'm proud of it. Uh, let's see. I'm getting the poll from yesterday. Where did I put it here? Let's see. Uh, Here's a question, Jeff. Yeah, please. Um, we're talking about VMUs and stuff like that. I've been looking recently into Dreamcast oh, no. emulation. Oh my god! How old are you, Tam? I'm too. I'm very old. Yeah, give me, just give me the number. I want to. What? Or you just I am what, thirty-five. Right. Okay. And so yeah. my um my thirty-six-year-old friend Mike Minotti just started mm -hmm. collecting GameCube games. Okay. I want you both to go look up the definition of midlife crisis. And you're gonna like now is when you're gonna to decide to start collecting <laughs> physical games. I, earlier today, I tweeted, I might, "I'm thinking about getting back into Magic: The Gathering." So, well, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, listen, Dreamcast is. I mean, I love that. I love a Dreamcast. Uh, listen, I don't the reason me. I'm saying it is like uh, this is a thing that I like to do um, on Giant Bomb, where I tease a bunch of projects 
mm-hmm. that um, may or may not come to yeah. fruition. <laughs> too busy to do, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so like recently, uh, as you know, I've been looking for a game to stream right regularly in the same way that you do xenoblades i want to do a regular stream and i've been thinking about what game i could do and i don't know i've i've not played soul reaver in a little while Ooh, that could be fun um i'll tell you what we've been having a lot of fun just having someone stream a game having a couple of other people sit in that's been great for sonic have you played for eternal darkness i started it on a dreamcast emulator like last year and i could not i didn't get it and the time has passed me. I might actually need to sit down with someone like you who understands what, what is there to love so I can yeah. appreciate it. I would I would 100% show up to watch you play that. That would be very fun. Yeah, and there is a like a, a, a high-res remastered asset thing that was released, so mm, maybe, okay. maybe that's the stream. Maybe that's the stream pick. You All know? right, let's do it. Yes, that's right. There was that, that. Those HD texture packs are so cool. It's working really good in Internal Darkness, too, so... Well, uh, I I, you know, I think we will have some time next week to make that happen if you have time. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Especially now that the swipe is done, so you got some more time in your life. All right. Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to listen to Hideo Kojima's podcast past the first episode? Uh, 81.6% said no. 18.4% said yes. That's actually pretty good. If I were to ask that same thing, are you going to listen to my podcast? It would probably be way worse than this. So, mm-hmm. um, have you, uh, so Tam... I know you're you uh, consider yourself oh, yeah. an aficionado of oh, yeah. Metal Gear and and uh, Hideo Kojima's video games. Mm-hmm. Have you listened to this podcast yet? I have downloaded it. I'm ready. I'm going to listen to it. It's my weekend treat. Okay. I, I want to check back in with you next week and and see what you think because it's I listened to it and I was talking about it with Patrick. It's uh it's a bit of an odd duck. It's got a w- weird vibe to it and it and he did, like mostly just answers all the questions like um we started doing working on something, everyone doubted me and then I did it better and everyone got it. Ciao. <laughs> it's like that. It's like, I'm like, all right, Kojima. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll listen to the second episode. I guess we'll see. We'll figure out what he's going to say next. Uh, I mean, because uh, you kind of already went over, like, I had a bunch of good ideas. Now he needs to actually tell real stories next time. So, yeah, I wa- I wa- I'm really hoping this ad reads on that podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to hear Hideo Kojima yeah. reading for, like, Casper Mattresses. Absolutely. Yeah, him and... Um, see what was going to happen. Going back back and forth, Jeff Keighley being like, Jeff Keighley, you're you're a small small business owner. Uh, yeah. What do you need? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, all right, we got to come up with another poll. What are we going to do about Billy Mitchell here? Uh, let's see. Billy, Billy Mitchell, fallen angel or not. No. Yes. <laughs> uh, B- no, Billy Mitchell. Uh, uh, do you believe... Billy Mitchell's or Billy Mitchell's doctor won't see him anymore because of video games. Do Billy Mitchell defamed by defamed or didn't pay bills? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on, Tam? What do you got going on for this weekend? You got any plans? Got anything you're uh, gonna be playing? Mate. Sadly, I'm going to be working through the weekend. My God. <laughs> because I have got a bunch of things that I need to write up. Um for the coming week i am going to see nine inch nails this weekend though uh which is a little treat on sun- that is Sunday, a, that is a very is. nice treat yeah um uh so that will be my main thing i'm hoping that i can actually like put off the uh, the the things that i need to write for work for next week but it just doesn't look feasible so i think i'm gonna end up having to write it all over the weekend and it's uh, like yeah like we're saying a very very busy week next week so yeah yeah Yeah. um and of course i I will be spending it mourning the queen oh of course yes but that goes without saying i was not even gonna question that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, as as will i of course yes yeah yeah yeah. uh disney thing is at 4 p.m eastern 1 p.m pacific we will be talking over it tam you're gonna be able to make that again i know you should be able to make that yeah i should be able to make that yeah we might play some splatoon after that and if you could stick around great if you can't no no problem i got no time for those fucking octopus (laughs) pervert shit i'm out there and those are that's they don't talk about my my sweet little squid boys that way um (laughs) all right everybody we're gonna get out of here tam thank you so much for hanging out with me thank you for having me it's always a pleasure and i look forward to being back soon Yes, next week, hopefully. And then, uh, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, You're the best audience in gaming. Until next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye.